Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 22 november 2015. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. In het weekend zijn de uitzendingen van de Daily Minutes vrijwel geheel in het Engels. We hebben vandaag weer Contestia met de gebruikelijke instellingen. Informatie gaat daar nog steeds verder over de geheimzinnige nummerzenders. In de tweede helft van de uitzending hebben we een proef met Olivia, de zeg maar grote broer van Contestia. Instellingen zijn vrijwel gelijk, 355 hertz. Het instelmenu ziet er ook vrijwel hetzelfde uit als bij Contestia. Zie eventueel www.pa0ete.nl, die vandaag wel actueel en accuraat is. Ahum. Our weekend shows are in English. Today, as usual, we have some data in English on those secretive and mysterious number stations with the usual settings and a center frequency of 355 Hz. All details can be found on www.papaalpha0echotangoecho.nl. In the second half of the bulletin, data will switch to the big brother of Contestia with a female name, Olivia. Settings will however be identical to Contestia, as you can see in the screenshot on Papa Alpha Zero Echo Tango Echo.nl. Our bulletin today consists of news from both ARRL from the USA and from WIA in Australia. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. The plenary meeting of WRC 15 in Geneva has approved an allocation of 5351.5 to 5366.5 kilohertz to the amateur service on a secondary basis with a power limit of 15 watts effective isotropic radiated power. The November 18th decision on agenda item 1.4 was adopted on two back-to-back readings. Some Region 2 countries, but not the U.S., will be permitted up to 25 watts EIRP. With this action, and despite conditions that are more restrictive than had been hoped at the start of the conference, the amateur service has obtained the first new global HF allocation since 1979. While the final acts of the conference are expected to take effect on January 1st, 2017, the new band will not become available to amateurs until their National Telecommunications Administration amends its rules and licensing conditions. Those administrations that already permit amateurs to operate in the 5 MHz range under certain conditions and on a not-to-interfere basis, including the FCC, will be considering whether, how, and when to modify those arrangements in light of the international allocation. The International Amateur Radio Union team is doing what it can to influence the agenda for WRC 19. The agenda could include addressing amateur spectrum requirements in the 50 to 54 megahertz band in region 1, which could lead to at least partial harmonization of the 6 meter band worldwide. A proposed agenda item to align the 160 meter allocation in region 1 with the rest of the world is no longer under active consideration. The WRC-19 agenda will also likely pose spectrum defense challenges, including possible consideration of the 420 to 450 megahertz band to accommodate a new allocation to the space operations service for satellites in non-geostationary orbit that are described as small satellites or satellites with short duration missions. The IARU team continues to monitor several other WRC-15 items that appear to be headed toward acceptable conclusions. WRC-15 continues through the signing of the final acts on November 27th. Now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. AO-85 has been formally commissioned and turned over to AMSAT operations, who are now responsible for the scheduling and modes. The following guidelines are provided for users. 1. Uplink power should be on an order of minimum 200 watts EIRP for full quieting at lower antenna elevation angles. Your mileage may vary. With an arrow, 5 watts has been used successfully to make contacts. Two. Polarity is important. The satellite antennas are linear. You will need to adjust throughout the pass. Full duplex operation facilitates these adjustments while transmitting and is highly recommended. 3. The downlink is very strong and should be heard well with almost any antenna. 4. Downlink audio is 5 kHz deviation, as expected. Many will perceive that as the audio is low. This is an effect of the filtering below 300 Hz, which provides for the DUV telemetry coupled with any noise the uplink signal resulting from lack of full quieting or being off frequency. That makes for less fidelity than a typical receiver in terms of audio frequencies passed. 5. 
transmit down leak frequency varies with temperature. Due to the wide range of temperatures we are seeing in the eclipse cycle, the transmitter can be anywhere from around 500 hertz low at 10 degrees Celsius to near 2 kilohertz low at 40 degrees Celsius. 6. Receive frequency has been generally agreed to be about 435.170 MHz, although the AFC makes that hard to pin down and also helps with the uplinks that are off frequency. Thanks to the AMSAT News Service for this story and the Fox 1 operations team. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the ARRL Audio News. A new contest to promote activity between stations in the UK and in Ireland and the rest of the world debuts with an SSB event December 5th through 6th and a CW event January 23rd and 24th. Both get underway at 1200 UTC on Saturday and end 24 hours later. The United Kingdom and Ireland Contest Club is sponsoring the new contest. All UK and EI contesters, including those with modest stations and antennas, will experience the fun of being a multiplier in a worldwide contest, the announcement said. For the first year or two, we have to take into account that UK and EI participation may take time to build up and that there are long periods when DX stations cannot work UK and EI stations because there is no propagation, the announcement pointed out. Accordingly, we are initially allowing DX to DX contacts, which will make the contest more interesting for DX stations. Complete information on the event is on the UK EI DX contest website. The fall 2015 edition of Radio Waves is now available for free via the ARRL website. Published quarterly in PDF format by ARRL Education Services, this issue includes such articles as Using Sensors to Explore Terraforming, STEM School and Academy Amateur Radio Club Builds a Repeater, and Community College's DIY Sprint Shines for an Eris Contact. The fall 2015 edition also looks at how ham radio can help Boy Scouts earn the radio merit badge, news, ideas, and support for instructors, ham radio instruction for people with disabilities, and the evolution of a licensing class. Both current and back issues of Radio Waves are available on the ARRL website. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hi, I'm Brian, VK3GR with Worldwide Special Interest Group News, this week beginning with Final Frontier. Reruns in space or Radio Redo? It seems that old jokes, unlike radio waves, have an uncanny ability to bounce back and return to Earth. Amateur Radio Newsline have reminded us of a news prank the BBC staged a few years ago. A fictional radio astronomer at an observatory in Puerto Rico happened upon some old broadcast signals just floating out in space while attempting to track extraterrestrial signals from his lab. Or so the story goes. He then identified those surprise signals as transmissions from old TV broadcasts, identifying them even down to the point that he could name the very TV shows the signals were carrying. Well, the story, like the signals, got very decent airplay for the April Fool's Day prank the British broadcasters pulled a couple of years ago. It was theorised at the time that the signals likely bounced off some faraway asteroid cloud and thus returned to Earth. TV shows he identified were said to be some 50 years old or more. Well, it didn't take 50 years, but something has apparently bounced back to Earth for real this time. And it's this old story about these ancient reruns. Twitter feeds and other forms of social media have come alive with this bizarre tale that old radio waves just don't die and don't even fade away. All of which makes for very poor science, but a very good joke, even if it's nowhere near close to April Fool's. The special event call which ends in December is PD15XMAS. The special event station PD15XMAS will be on the air from December 5 to January 1. And Raymond Smith, PD70X's QSL route. 